Hello, welcome to the third uh, exercise for PH Reg. And this uh, uh, exercise is to demonstrate how to model repeated measures of a covariant. Okay. Um, think the second one we demonstrate how to incorporate a time dependent covariate in the Cox model. Uh, but it was uh, based on some other covariates. Um, what if a covariate that itself is being measured, you know, over time? Okay, so this um, uh, example uh, is based on this data set called the tumor, which uh, uh, contains 19 variables. ID is the subject identification time, the survival time. Dead is the censoring variable. Uh, one is dead and zero is censored. And dose, uh, dose of the tumor promoting agent. And then you have P1 to P15, uh, that is the number of uh, papillomas at the 15 times that animals died. Uh, these 15 death times are weeks 27, 34, 37, 41, 43, 45, 46, 47, 49, 50, 51, 53, 65, 67, 71. For instance, subject 1 died at week 47. It had no uh, papilloma at week 27, 5 papillomas at week 34, uh, 6 at week 37, and 8 at week 41. And 10 at weeks 43, 45, 46, and 47. So this uh, shows you kind of an increasing number of uh, papillomas um, over time. For an animal that died before week 71, the number of papillomas is missing for those times beyond its death. Okay. So that's the setup of the uh, study, the data. So let's read the mean, uh, the data set here. using a data step and uh, let's print out just take a look what the data set look like so here's the data data set you got the ID time dead dose and then the p1 to p15 and you can see um, like for the first one you have 0 5 8 10 10 and then uh, it's gone okay and the p9 it, it there's miss start missing uh, so you know, there are 45 uh, subjects here. So basically the number of uh, papillomas, uh, the, the variable name is MPAP, for each animal in the study was measured repeatedly over time. So that's the time dependent covariate we want to uh, put into the model. Again, we can use the programming language approach uh, to do that. So here's the program language. So the pH reg procedure uh, model statement is very similar to previous one uh, modelings. And now we use two array uh, statements. Um, we define two arrays, PP, uh, which kind of uh, uh, placeholders for P1 through P14. And we have another array, TT, and they are placeholders for T1 through T15, okay? So this array uh, is uh, like uh, dimension is 14 and uh, the array TT the dimension is 15, okay? Then we say we want assign all these uh, values, the number of the weeks, uh, the deaths occurred uh, to the TT array. So T1 equal to 27, T2 equal to 34, T3 equal to 37, etc. Until T15 equal to 71. Okay. Uh, so we have assigned uh, values for all the uh, TT array. And now we do the programming language. Uh, if the survival time is less than TT1, so it's really uh, within the first 27 weeks, then uh, we assign it to um, zero. The number of paps are zero. It's zero. But it, 
if else is bigger than 15, so the exceeds the largest one, then we just assign this number of paps equal to the last of the p counts, okay, p15. So anywhere in between, so it's, it's either in one, two, uh, dimension of PP, which is 14. Uh, if the TTI um, is less than or equal to the survival time, um, and then strictly less than the next uh, TT time. So basically, uh, for example, if uh, this is uh, T2 and T3, you're looking at 34, week 34 and a week, in between week 34 and week 37. Then you assign the number of uh, PAP uh, in t uh, equals to the PP array, the P, uh, PPI. So it can be 1, 2, 3, up to 14. Okay. So basically, you deal with uh, the first one and the last one of this variable, and everything else you assign to the P1 to P14. Okay. So let's run that to see how it works. Very quick. You have the model uh, information here, um, and uh, it converges pretty quickly. Uh, we didn't use the IT print, otherwise you can see it's probably converged very fast. Uh, and if you go to the uh, maximum likelihood estimates here, looking for p-values, the dose variable is not significant, but the number of uh, PAP uh, it's really, really significant, okay. And it seems it's uh, like positively related uh, to the survival time, okay. Um, okay, so, okay, uh, not, uh, not to the positive, not survival time, but the hazard, okay, positively related to the hazard. Uh, and it's highly significant, but this is a, remember, a time covariant covariance, okay. Okay, so here um, we use the programming language, but there's another approach, uh, which is using the counting process formulation. And the counting process formulation, um, you know, we need uh, uh, like uh, two time variables, like T1 and T2 the left end point of the risk interval and T2 the right end point of the risk interval. So we basically, we need to divide the time period into different risk intervals, okay? So um, it's a counting process style of input data. Uh, we name it tumor one, and it contains some multiple observations for each subject in the data set tumor. Uh, in addition to variable ID, time, then those four new variables, T1, T2, and uh, NPAP. So we're going to define that number of uh, papillomas in the time interval, uh, T1 and T2. And another status, we need another censoring status at T2, okay. So here is we do some um, uh, programming the data step and do some programming uh, steps within the data step. Uh, we say tumor equal to a, tu a data equal to tumor one, um, and so here set tumor. So we're going to use the tumor data set, and we keep the ID, time, dead, dose, and then T1, T2, and PAP and status. And here we define two arrays, PP and QQ, uh, for P1 to P14, and QQ is the P2 to P15. And another one array is TT, which is from 1 to 15, um, um, which it contains all these values, okay? After that, uh, we initiate T1, T2 to 0, static equals 0, and then we, uh, if uh, T time, so have time to TT1, then we will assign T2 equal to TT1, and the MPAP equal to P1, and status equal to dead. Okay, so it didn't survive beyond the TT1. Then we put into the data set tumor 1 here. And the else, then we just do a loop, uh, <coughs> the counter, internal counter I from uh, 
1 to the dimension uh, PP, which is uh, 14. Um, if the TTI equal to the survival time, then we assign T2 equal to survival time. M prime is a PP, the I, and the status equal to dead, and then output. Okay. And else, if the TTI is less than time, then uh, we look into if the PPQ, uh, PPI not equal to the QQI. So here you get, uh, you know, define these two um, arrays. And if they're not the same, then uh, you assign the QQI equal to missing and T2 equal to the survival time. Uh, if they are equal, then T2 equal to uh, the TTI. Um, and uh, then you assign the MPAP equal to PPI and then output the status equal to zero. Uh, then uh, T1 equal to e t uh, T2. Okay. Then if uh, t time is beyond or e uh, equal to TT15, then just T2 equal to survival time, MPAP equal to the last of the P15, status equal to dead and then output and then okay so this is a pretty complicated uh, data step uh, kind of build up the counting process um, representation of survival data so okay, take a quick look of this you get the t1 t2 status and pep variable created and then you can fit uh, the time dependent variable variate and the similar result is still highly significant. So one advantage of using this approach is really the um, it's easy to identify influential observations. So we're gonna use these proc means uh, to generate uh, the uh, descriptive statistics uh, and then save them into output uh, out to and then use uh, ask G plot, uh, SGP plot proc to produce the influential data point plots. Okay, so it's going to take a while. So here are the uh, DF betas for dose. So this really measures the individual influence on the beta coefficient. So we can see here, here, and here, there are uh, like a couple of uh, observations It's really uh, have a big influence on the betas. Similarly here, uh, you can see we got one here and got one here about the observation 30. And this is probably, I don't know, 22 or 23. Uh, so this kind of um, um, plot let us uh, identify influential observations, so we need to go back to the data set to run some more investigation on um, these influential observations, decide uh, what to do with them uh, in the context of the model uh, building. Okay, so this is uh, a demonstration of how to um, incorporate a time-dependent covariate, which is repeatedly measured over time.